Hi, I'm Paula Dean with Studio on the Bluff. I wanted to share this door with you. I'm working on a door series, and this door is my inspiration. This door was my husband's grandparents' front door of their house when they were first married. We found this door in an old barn and just kind of brushed it off and hung it on the wall, and I've loved it ever since. I took a few photos of this door and in photo editing software, changed the colors a little bit and printed them out. And I'd like to show you how I did the photo transfer techniques using this door as my inspiration. So using this photo and some photo editing software to change the colors, I've created four different experiments. I'm using products to see how I can transfer this into an acrylic skin or a photo transfer onto various fabrics. The first is a product by Plaid called Picture This. It's a transfer medium. The second is a golden product called GAC 100. It's a multi-purpose acrylic polymer. The third is much thicker. It is a gloss gel medium by Liquitex. And the fourth is matte medium by Simply Acrylic. So I am going to paint each of these on the right side of my photocopies. And these are uh, color photocopies done on a copy machine. I'm going to put the medium on the front and turn it over onto each of these scraps. This, the first, is a curtain shear. The second is cheesecloth. I will be putting it on this non-woven interfacing. And I'm also going to do one with just the medium on top and for that one I'm probably going to put three to four layers on to make a nice thick skin. It's very important to not get any of this medium on the back. We are going to be wetting the fabric from, I mean, the paper from the back and um, removing it. So we do not want any of the medium touching the back. I have an old gift card and I am just going to smooth that out, make sure there's no air bubbles. And that's the first one. The second one, I'm just putting a thin layer on. This is the one that will not be adhered to anything else. and I'll be adding several layers to that.
I'm going to do the same thing for each medium and then I'll be right back. Okay, it's been several days since I applied each of these mediums to that door image. Um, some of them have not been touched in several days, and the ones that are that are not adhered to any fabric or interfacing, the ones that I put several coats on, are the ones that um, I did a coat each day and let them dry in between. What I didn't mention when I was putting that on was the surface that I'm putting this on as they're drying. So you want to do plastic. It can be um, a page protector. Uh, this is a placemat from the Dollar Tree and um, the nonstick mats because you don't want to, this, these are glue, so you do not want to adhere them to other fabric or paper or something that they wouldn't come off of. These um, stick to the mat and then they come off easily. The orange placemat is also something that I've used to catch paint um, to, to, uh, for easy cleanup. And what I did notice was it these images picked up some of that paint from that placemat. So this may be a good thing. It may add more interest when we remove the paper. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the paint on the back, but I'm really anxious to see if any of that shows through. You may be able to use that to your advantage. So I have a spray bottle of water. Uh, the water, this is tap water, and I warmed it up. So um, I, I used not hot water because that would build up pressure, but it is a little warmer than room temperature. And I think that may help with removing some of the of the paper. So our GAC 100, um, they are nice and glossy. The, the medium that has the four layers is glossy. It has, it's thin feeling, but it has a, a little bit of a leathery texture. The gloss medium, much thicker. This one was put on with a, um, with a trowel rather than a paintbrush, and so it's a very thick. I'm anxious to see what that looks like when we remove the paper. The picture this, which was the product made to transfer photos, is white. This is the one with just the medium on top, and I can't even see that door image. And so this one um, is a good experiment as well. Uh, in with the shears, I did get some water bubbles in there, so I'm curious what's going to happen there. Happy accidents, right? And the matte medium um, also dries very clear and shiny. So I am going to put these in, put these off to the side. And let's start with the GAC 100. And I am going to use that warm water and just give it a good spray. Let that soak for a minute. Here's the interfacing. Give that one a soak. And the cheesecloth. And finally, the um, door image with just the medium on top. So I'm going to give that a minute to just soften up that that paper and as it softens I'm just going to do a circular motion and the paper will start to roll up. Now each of these mediums feel different weight so I'm starting off pretty gentle slight pressure 
I have a feeling the images will be easy to tear, especially these with only one coat. All right, here is the next day update. And everything dried for 24 hours. So I've sprayed each of these. I've rubbed them in a circular motion until I could get that first layer off. Then I let them dry again. So now I'm gonna go through the entire thing again and see if I can get the rest of this film, the paper film, off the top. Right off the bat, I'm pretty impressed with a couple of them. This, um, the gel, the gloss gel medium from Liquitex has the least amount of the paper film left. It, it feels pretty durable and I love the transparency of it. I can see this being used to advantage later. So I'm going to go ahead and give each of these another spray with the water bottle and get another layer of that film off and then I'll come back with another update. All right, it's been two days. Everything is completely dried. I have removed all of the paper from the top. This is a lot of paper removal. I am, I no longer have fingerprints on this hand. But this was a lot of fun and I really like the results. So each of them worked in their own way and I can see a use for each of these. So quickly, let's just go through. The GAC 100 has a very thin um, results of the, the one that's just the image. This does not have any fabric backing. It's very transparent. It's thin, but fairly strong. And the image turned out pretty good. The GAC 100 was a lot harder to get the paper off. Matter of fact, there's still a little bit of paper left on. The scrim of cheesecloth is you can see the texture of the cheesecloth. Even where I was a little aggressive and the cheesecloth is, there's a hole, it looks, it just adds to the, to the door. The shears, again, fairly transparent. And this is the interfacing. All in all, the interfacing, I probably would not use that one for any of them. The matte medium, the same, four coats. It's a little more textured. I couldn't get the matte medium to be as smooth. The scrim, the sheer, it's a very nice image. I would use that. And then the interfacing. The interesting one was the picture of this, and I've used this for years, so I knew this would be successful. What I didn't know was how bright those images would be. The picture of this goes on white, so there isn't that transparent, 
and it brightens the picture because it's on a white background. They all turned out really nice. That picture, this, um, this is a project I did probably 25 years ago and I actually used this little purse a lot and it's worn very well and the pictures are still vibrant and so I know this product works good and then the the gloss gel was probably by far the thickest one this is actually feels like leather it's thick it's very transparent and I thought it would be neat to look at that on different fabrics so it it shows through here's some hand dye that I just loved looking at it and how it changes on all of the different prints so that might be fun depending on where you place it the same with the cheesecloth so even though I was a little aggressive with some I think that that may have been like this one the that's only one layer at the end so I know why that one this one I probably didn't get as good of a coat on the side and so it it came off but all in all I think this was a really good experiment depending on what effect I'm looking for next time I know I when I can get something that's very transparent I know when I, when I can get something that's very true to color and I don't really think you need to have the substrate under it. I really think that you can just do the skin, the acrylic skin, with anything that's a polymer. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this experiment. I know I have. And now I have to figure out what project I'm going to put 16 doors on. If you have any ideas, give me a comment. Thanks for watching.